database, kids. Just use files, and then you won't have so many issues. Uh, <laughs> okay, never mind. I'm trying to make your life simpler with the serverless talk. Okay. And uh, I'm just hold on. I'm just trying to remember what a serverless. Does anyone know? No. It's basically it's basically you get someone else to do your serverless stuff. Okay. If that's so it's serverless for you, but um, a cloud provider takes it over. And um, I guess my talk is about using uh, Golang in that sort of environment. Um, because right now Amazon, I don't think, support Golang, uh, for example, in Lambda. In Lambda. Okay. So I'm going to tell you about using it at work. I work for a company called Spool, a competitor to Viki. Uh, we do Bollywood content. So if, you, if you're into Bollywood. The Koreans are the Bollywood's not fun to me. Uh, and uh, what else? Yeah, we, we, we use this in production. Uh, I'll tell you how maybe later if I can remember. So what is serverless? Um, I'm going to talk about Amazon Web Services. I must admit I'm an Amazon fanboy. Uh, there are other cloud providers, I think, but Amazon is definitely the best. <laughs> you, so um, the whole idea with this uh, with serverless is that you, you reduce your sort of logic to like something quite small and then you upload it and Amazon runs it and the idea is that it's like like super low maintenance you don't have to worry, run the server yourself you don't have to provision it it should automatically scale to whatever that means um, and you pay for what you use so like for me when I'm just doing these simple tests um, I, I don't think I even like registered 0 0.01 of a cent so, oh, now it scales. I was trying to get this SVG to scale. And now, that's the stupid logo for, um, uh, for AWS Lambda. Every time someone mentions Lambda, I'm just brought back to my computer science <laughs> course book. I hate this book. Does anyone have to read it? It's bullshit. Car kidder. That's not real life. Uh, yeah, it's not real. Um, anyway, it's not but this. It's, good. it's, it's good. not the. Who, who had, to, honestly, who had to do this one at school? Just a couple, yeah. <laughs> if you went to a classical university, you probably would have. And now it's really out of scale. Um, <laughs> maybe I can downscale it. Oh, <laughs> no. shit. I had something at the bottom of this. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. Um... <laughs> this is awesome. Uh, 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 uh. Hold on, what is it? What is it? Okay, um, <laughs> this is terrible. <laughs> you, look, you can all go to talks so that can convert to a comment and actually look at the slides on your phone. Yeah. yeah. Um, anyway, so, uh, all right, I was just trying to define what Lambda was. Okay, whatever. No, no, actually, yeah. So Lambda is, all it is is utilizing Linux containers. And Linux containers sounds like some sort of virtualized VMware, but I think the best way to think of it is just running a process with a namespace. It's not a security feature. It's nothing very complicated. The cool thing is it's just isolated in a non-secure way, I would say. Um, and when you upload to Lambda, the one thing you should note is that perhaps the, 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 there needs to be a warm-up time when they get the containers going. So the initial performance can be quite bad, but otherwise it works quite well. The whole Linux container, I mean, th thank, thanks to Linux, Linus Torvalds and his, and his minions, we have quite a cool technology being used the, that we can leverage. And I was going to mention, yes, it does currently only support, uh, Amazon, Amazon only support Node.js and Python. But there's a way of getting it to work with Golang. Because you can actually uh, upload uh, an AMD64 binary and get Node.js or Python, for that matter, to execute it. Um, another thing that should be noted about Lambda is that there's, you have all these restrictions, and you just have to look them up. But for example, you can't have a long-running operation. They'll get cut out. Also, you, can't, uh, you, do, you have quite a limited storage. So, for example, at work, I work with videos. We, you know, I would like to use Lambda, for example, to to encode videos, but that's 
a long running operation with a bit lot of data. Not applicable to Lambda. Don't use it for that's not the right task for Lambda. Unless you're running on encoder. Still, I don't think it'll be. It, you've got too much space. I mean, too too big a file. Yeah, yeah. So the the great the what Lambda is good for is event processing. So if something happens, you do something. It's like these little bits of pieces that you just need to do at your at your workplace. Um, that's what it's really good for. Let's go back to your slides. If it works. Oh no! It's my browser. Um, is it under here? <laughs> is it here? Yeah, it is. <laughs> Apex. Okay, Apex. Apex is um, a tool by this guy named TJ Holloway Chuck. Is that the way you pronounce it? TJ. So, um, I don't know about you, but I, I like my stars. Who likes David Beckham? Who likes Victoria Beckham? <laughs> anyway. I don't really like those people, but I do like famous people in the uh, in this community, like you know Rob Pike, the guy behind uh, GoLang, uh, Ian Hickson, the guy behind uh, What Work Group and HTML, um, and Linus Torvalds. I, I like these characters. You can, um, well, I'm probably sounding like a fanboy, and I am, but this guy T.J. Holloway Chuck, he has more than 500 uh, npm modules, and they're very good quality. This guy is a freaking savant. He's a machine. And he's behind Apex, so it must be good. <laughs> and Apex basically, um, as the tagline goes, allows you to build and deploy Lambda functions with Go support. Um, and then, yeah, uh, basically a Lambda works off events. And if I could show you these events, probably never going to work. You get different sorts of, uh, sorts of events. Um, I don't, I don't know who, are you guys familiar with AWS? Because like for example, there's an S3 event. Uh, S3 is for, for your file storage. Um, it's better than using a database, hint, hint. Uh, yeah, there's SE, um, these, these, uh, the simple notification service, which is a simple way of just subscribing to a uh, notification of some sort. And there's, um, basically the, the whole Amazon infrastructure is primed with events, so you can basically conjure up things like if a file is uploaded, you do something, or if some message is received, you do something. So in my, in my workplace, for example, um, a new movie is added to the catalog, and it hits my Lambda function, and my Lambda function uses GoLang HTML templates to generate a static file that gets uploaded to S3, which in turn is cached on CloudFront, and then there's like a new entry in the website. Oh, okay. For example, Cute. so and and then obviously, um, yeah, lambda functions are booted by events, but what they can do is kind of limited by the Amazon SDK, which is a lot more. So you can you can pretty much go to town on this sort of stuff. Um, I thought I should mention there's another framework called Serverless, which is a bit confusing because it's like Serverless technology and there's a Serverless framework. framework. And I should mention it because you can actually get GoLand running uh, binaries uh, running in serverless. And um, serverless does have some nice features like setting up, uh, attaching the events. Right now with Apex, you have to manually set up the events with the Lambda functions, which can be a bit tedious. But to be honest, when, you, when I, I'm also using serverless, I notice that like when you tear down and tear up, there are some bugs. I mean, I, I don't know who, you, who uses Amazon. I mean, CloudFormation. It's a nightmare. It's a goddamn nightmare. But um, yeah, it's something else to consider, um, and it has like a more of a comprehensive syntax, and it kind of helps you do local stuff too, a little bit better than I think Apex does. But Apex is actually a little bit more dear and dear to my heart because it just wants to be a bit more minimalistic, and just do one thing and do one thing well, the Unix philosophy. So Apex uh, is. I'm happy with the choice. Um, this is where I will do a demo, but I thought to myself, I, I, this could be. What's, what's serverless again? It's a uh, running no, lambda no function. No serverless. Oh, serverless. Oh, it's just a framework. It's written in Node.js. Ah, oh, I didn't know. That's another hint. Hint. <laughs> Apex is written in Go. Serverless Apex is, is run in Node.js, so it's a bit. The, the code is already like insane. Any Node.js project is insane. <laughs> Um, uh, but anyway, so I wanted to show you guys a demo, and I actually bothered to record it, 
I'm not going to tell you what I was wearing this morning, not very much, and I just uh, thought I'd, oh no, you can't see that, can you? Oh, can you? Uh, basically, yeah. there's a file where you can change things like environment variables, like for example, I changed the environment variable to my own S3 bucket, and then, and then I created this bucket. This is so cool, I don't have to do any typing. And then I set up the website on that bucket. Right. And then I and then I deploy oh I, I deploy Apex deploy. Um, there's some code there I probably didn't show you. It's just one one simple file. I'll give you the link to the code. So you just deploy it, you have these convenient functions like Apex logs to see the logs. Okay. Uh, like you have Apex metrics to see um, how much you run it. Like for example, I've run it three times, it doesn't even register as a cost. And, um, and then the big thing is just to, you can invoke it locally just with an event. So what happens is that the event comes in and it hits my template and then it just gets uploaded to S3. So if I, um, oh, now, now I'm showing you the main.go. Yeah, it's boring. No, it goes fine. <laughs> no, but to be honest, this templating stuff is a bit boring. Uh, <clears throat> um, how many lines of code is that? Too many lines, considering what it does. Oh, another cool thing about Apex is that um, it doesn't hide things from you. You can actually see the build. This is you can see the the Node.js that that executes the binary. I like that. I like seeing everything. I hate it when sh when things are hidden away from me. So hopefully, I will just show you the output here. Just copying and pasting this URL, and boom. This is this is basically the template printing out uh, what I what I sent. And then if I if I reload the Lambda uh, console, you can see that I uploaded the uh, the Lambda function there. So it's a great way of sort of managing your your Lambda functions, and way better than messing around with the Amazon console. And here I think I'm just giving you an example where I'm attaching an event. This is my screenshot bucket. So I have a bind on my on my keyboard. So I'm going to make a screenshot now. Oh, actually, oh I. I Actually, I made a mistake there. Damn, I think I put the wrong video in. Anyway, <laughs> this video um, shows you that um, you can't have two triggers on something, so I had to go and remove the trigger and then put it back on. But the idea is that once I take a screenshot, uh, it will trigger an S3 event, and, uh, and then it will show up as a static file thanks to that Lambda function. Who, who keeps all their screenshots by year, month, day? <laughs> for the last more than 10 years. I do, it's great. It's a great way of figuring out what you've done. Um, yeah, so right now with, that, with, the, with Apex you do this manually, but with serverless it does it all automatically, but you have to obviously put everything serverless. So, that, so now I'm taking a screenshot, and then if I reload Control R, there's the details of that event triggered by that S3 upload. And there's the key, and then if I, if I load that key into the URL, you can see the screenshot. So I think that demonstrates everything, I think. Um, hopefully that wasn't too boring. Um, okay, caveats, or what I learned along the way, or I hope you don't, guys don't mess up like I did and waste time. The Apex and the, the one limitation of uh, uh, Apex is that you have to use standard error for, for logging, which is a bit of a pain in the ass. Um, so, and the next thing um, that's painful is testing. Because I'm quite used to like go test with my, with, with my, my functions. So you can't really do that with this sort of structure. So I was chatting to some person who knows better than me. And he says when you, when you write Lambda functions, just think of them as shims. You don't put your logic in there. You put that separate somewhere else, and you just keep your your sort of your uh, lambda functions very minimalistic. So keep your logic out of it. And um, I also found like authorization really tricky. I found like you know like when you're doing a real proper website, a real proper web application, you want to be able to have it multi-tenanted. Is that the right term? You know, so that you can have different user groups. And I mean, if you if you're doing stuff seriously, do shit like that. Unfortunately, it's kind of painful to do it like that because, well, anyway, it is painful. Um, and obviously, AWS 
you know, SNS, S, I mean, I don't know how familiar you guys are with S3, but a lot of this stuff goes over my colleague's head and they use it. You know what I mean? It's like, guys, SNS, it's simple. But AWS and all this terminology, it's, it's a new thing and uh, yeah, it's a learning curve. And then um, I guess part of the whole multi-tenanted stuff is all comes down to um, the nightmare, which is like managing your accounts and all that sort of stuff. Uh, yeah, my big tip for, for, for any uh, AWS newbies is to actually get separate accounts. Uh, that makes things easier. Get separate accounts. You're supposed to use rules. <laughs> no, no, that's the, that's the old way. Uh. New way is to have accounts um, so, you, you, so you have complete updates. isolation. Yeah. Um, and to conclude, I thought I would jot down why the hell I came out here. Yeah. No, there's a really good um, uh, YouTuber called MPJ, and he just he just uh, primed me on how to keep productive, um, you know, what to do and, and why you did it. So yeah, I gave this talk in order to share what I've been doing with Lambda. If you guys are also using Lambda, please share that with me, and maybe we can trade notes, because um, I just want to get better at using it. Um, I think it's the future, I dare say. It's plugging a lot of holes at work. It's fast. It's cheap. It's um, it's awesome. So where do you keep your business logic? Oh, and no. Well, I mean, for right now with Lambda, uh, it's doing simple things like right. you know, event, and it's uh, really and, then, and then slap it into a template. Effectively, it's doing stateless things. Yeah, so uh, stateless things. Stateful stuff. I guess so. Yeah, it's, that's right, that's a good way of putting it. So, um, yeah, my takeaways for you guys was that yes, you can use uh, Golang with AWS Lambda. Uh, I, I, um, if you look at my slides, talks.webconverger.com, you, you can get a um, hold of my example, which, I, which is production quality, even though, probably now, forget that production quality. Bit. It is. It's a production effort. <laughs> it's a production, and, um, and yeah, give serverless a try. It's, don't think of it as, as the way you're going to build your next app. Just think of it as a way of plugging some holes and automating some little things here and there at, at your workplace. That's where I'd start. No, it's good for everything. It's, it's the next big data. It's, it's, it's going to be huge. No, start small, please, guys. And I think that's all I had to say. Um, there are, this talk has um, some links to some interesting stuff, like, for example, um, one nasty thing about using Go is that you obviously should be using the strongly typed nature of it and different events have a different schema but Apex has these useful tools to, um, to uh, you know, they have the types defined for each or the events basically. I think that's it guys. Um, please get in contact with me. I think I need to run off. So if you have anything to share, if you have any questions, uh, I'm happy to answer them. Okay, this is a question. Oh dear. One question. Yeah? Uh, did you benchmark this for costs against naked Python Lambda? No, I didn't. Because okay. uh, this actually shells out uh, a Go process from the. Yeah, um, it probably. Yeah, it sounds nasty, doesn't it? Their request. Um, well, <laughs> the, um, the way the containers work is that they get warmed up. So I, I guess the process is loaded in memory somehow. Yeah, but like, does the Apex framework, uh, does the Apex framework has leverage the Lambda? Yeah, it, it, yeah you can see the the JavaScript child process thing that goes. Yeah, I, I, I mean, it, it is a bit of a not. It's a shim. It's shimmied in. It's not. It's not great. I don't think it's going to be a performance. Um, what do you call it? It's not going to be performant. But I don't think it's going to be a bottleneck as well. I don't think it's made a bottom there. I mean, like, it's... It, because it's, because it's you're doing stateless yeah. stuff, let the yeah, yeah. guys handle the scaling for you. Yeah. You just pay more money, that's all. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, another question from... Just in terms of price, how much is it for, like, uh, I guess you pay for time? Or yeah, it's, comp it's, it's basically by time and compute resources. But to be honest, maybe this is a testament to how well how, how production quality my stuff is, but like it's like nothing. It's nothing. <laughs> yeah, it's not much. I think it's a million CPU seconds. It's like yeah, I know. Uh,
I wish I could show you our our Amazon bill. <laughs> Lambda doesn't really get on there. I mean, it is on there. It's so you isn't. Do you use SNS to feedback the events? Let's say you build your template. Do you have an SNS uh, to notify Simple that it's been done? No, we don't. Uh, yeah. you, you, it doesn't talk back to a central process that says this has been done successfully. No, there's no, what do you call that, coordination. There's no manager, no coordinator, no. supervisor, or whatever. The, the one really good thing I didn't really point out to you is that the, the logging is actually for free and good. You know what I mean? Like usually when you're building an app, you have this logging problem. How are you going to manage your logs and all that stuff? And blah, 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 blah. You get that for free. Yeah. Um, so you can see stuff going well. But I say all this stuff um, working with Golang, I think I think Golang is the best way to, to work with uh, with HTML templates because I think JavaScript solutions <laughs> suck. But I must concede that the tooling and and direction of Amazon stuff seems quite uh, Node.js centric. So like they 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 have like a thing in preview for like debugging JavaScript <coughs> on, on their console. That's pretty sweet. I still don't even know how to debug Golang. Do you guys do that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, there's all sorts of other cool things coming in with Lambda, which I think could be really, really uh, amazing. For example, they got this thing called Lambda on Edge. So your the CD. So right now, the way that Lambdas work is that they're run in a particular region. So I've loaded in my demo that I've loaded a Lambda to a, a, Singapore. Well, Singapore. But if you ran that Lambda function in Europe, it would probably suck. Okay. Uh, it, like for example, if you triggered it through an HTTP event. But the cool thing with well, it's in preview, it's in beta. I think it's there's nothing like it, is there? Um, they're, they're introducing Lambda at Edge. So basically, at all these cloud front edges all over the world, you can run Lambda on the edges. Your CDN, your Lambda. So basically, if you have people in some shitty country like, oh no, Australia. that's that's I can't say Australia. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like Australia. <laughs> Like Rwanda <laughs> or something like that, they could have an amazing user experience because they're basically on CDN type speeds. You know, you could be running some sort of transaction and get the result back in 10 milliseconds from some shitty country. That's effing amazing. I'm sorry to say. Yep. Okay, that concludes my talk. Please check out the slides and please uh, contact me with your any more questions. Really?